Good afternoon. My name is Alex Groznowski, an elementary school teacher, and I'm here today to interview Mr. Peter Kiriako. Well, uh, good afternoon, Mr. Kiriako. Thank you for coming to share us some insights on the upcoming election. Mr. Kiriako, uh, Election 94 is here again, and of course, uh, once again, the people of Scarborough will go to the polls to express their choice of a new municipal government on November the 14th. As I understand, this is your second attempt for, for running for office of a public school trustee in Ward 6. Uh, Mr. Kiriako, can you tell us and tell the public what is your platform and what do you see as the most important issues uh, at this time today? Uh, thank you very much, Alex. Uh, there are many issues, of course, that uh, are involved here. Mm -hmm. You have to excuse my voice, first of all, because I have a very okay. bad cold. Uh, like you said, uh, this is my second attempt, and uh, I will keep at it until uh, I succeed. Mm -hmm. uh, and like I said, there many issues which uh, involve the schooling system, which I think they could do a bit of uh, an advancement, a bit of uh, progress. Uh, most importantly, like, uh, right now, uh, the issue of the uh, increase, of course, is the most important issue that everybody uh, is talking about most these days. Um, and of course, that is something that it's number one in my agenda for the moment. Mm -hmm. Once elected, uh, then of course we have to take into consideration the rest of the problems. Uh, and that uh, increase of 36 uh, percent, which was originally 64, actually, um, I will uh, make a motion to rescind it. Uh, I will uh, do that, and if accepted by the rest of the elected trustees, and that's fine. If not, if the majority says no, then what I will do, I will just offer that 8,000 additional uh, dollars that uh, the trustees have gotten as an increase, uh, and I will give it to the Ward 6 uh, constituents, to the children, in a form of uh, a scholarship for children uh, or a donation, or I prefer actually I uh, mm -hmm. any kind of a, a donation to be given back. And I will, of course, uh, recommend and um, challenge the rest of the uh, school trustees to do the same. Mm -hmm. And I think that's basically uh, one of the most important Quite issues. Challenge there. Well, of course. <laughs> now, uh, besides that, there's a lot of other things that concern me. And uh, one of them is violence in schools. Uh, you've been a teacher, I'm sure you know about them. Actually, today I was listening to the news, and there was two teachers that been shot which is <laughs> is gone too far yes, and I think we, home, yes. we have to do something uh, very drastic about it the police has to take a better part in security in schools uh, not only for the teachers of course but for the uh, uh, students as well and uh, I'm sure that every family that sends the child to school they accept, uh, expect them to be safe mm -hmm. and sound and return back home so uh, with these situations now it's it's quite dangerous and therefore uh, we have to take a step into securing uh, the children and the teachers. Uh, naturally, there's many more issues involved. Uh, I believe basically in education for children, uh, the problem or the reasons that we have in uh, so many problems, of course, is because we have a lot of uh, various cultures in Scarborough and around all of Canada, I believe. but. Uh, since we're talking about Scarborough, let's concentrate on mm -hmm. that for the moment. Uh, various cultures, various nationalities, and naturally there's bound to be some kind of a conflict. But I believe that if a system was created that children should be educated from a very early age, uh, speaking about age two years old plus, or uh, selecting which TV shows these children should be watching, and by the help of the parents, then I'm sure that things will be different. Now, what kind of things could a parent teach is to uh, um, teach them about politeness, about hygiene, about safety, uh, awareness of drugs and violence and all kinds of fundamental human being uh, uh, right things to do. Mm -hmm. I'm sure that most of us know about them. Naturally, a lot of us did not have the opportunity to come up with that upbringing and therefore uh, we struggle now to correct things which were have been initiated when the child was still young. 
And I believe uh, creating a program like that for children will be uh, very, uh, it will be recommended. It will be one way at least that we could solve some of the problems. Naturally, it's impossible to solve all problems all at once, but uh, let's assume now that uh, if each one of us plays a part in our society, I'm sure that we could do much better. Mm -hmm. uh, there is other things, of course, which uh, play a big role. And I will do my best to help the community and the Ward 6 constituents to get what they want. Uh, another issue is that I think that all politicians, and not only politicians, I would say, because I'm sure these days a lot of people are kind of scared to say they're politicians, mm -hmm. because of the fact that some of them, some bad apples in a basket could uh, spoil the name of others. But then again, uh, I believe every person is different, and every new person that comes into politics and offers the services, I believe they have good intentions. And they should at least be given the chance, the opportunity to show what they can do. Uh, if any person, uh, it's been in an office for many years and hasn't managed to do anything or hasn't managed to show how efficient or some kind of progress, I believe they should be changed and given a chance to somebody else to prove what they can do because every person has his own input, his own ideas, and therefore uh, by voting for a person just because he has a beautiful name, I don't think that's the answer to our <laughs> solutions. Okay. So uh, I think every politician uh, and every person, in fact, uh, that works for a certain amount of money in a certain place, whether it be a factory or an office or doesn't matter what, I think they should be earning the money uh, according to the pay they're getting. So if you work part-time, for example, as far as the trustees are concerned, and they regard this uh, job as a part-time, they should get paid as part-time. If they uh, work full-time, fine, they could get full-time money, but then again, they have to put the hours that belongs to a full-time occupation. That's so right. yes. I believe that those people that are trustees and they have other jobs, and they are involved with other jobs, and they have to spend so many hours working with those occupations they have, I'm sure that there's not too much time left for them to apply the services uh, to the people, to the community that voted for them and put the trust in them to do a certain job for them, to serve them, because basically we are public servants, and if we are not in touch with the, with the public, we are out of touch, and therefore people should remember that. And I would say that those people that made the decision to put a certain person in a certain office should know that uh, by punishing them, let's say, by not voting for them because of the fact that they haven't done what they're supposed to do and given a chance to somebody else. And if that person doesn't do his job or are, as he's promising to do, then they should vote against that person as well the next time. Mm -hmm. So basically, that's what I really believe. There's many other uh, problems, of course, and naturally I cannot solve them all. And we're talking about discrimination, uh, equality, discrimination I'm talking about in schools of various backgrounds of nationalities of people that uh, sometimes they don't get along uh, so well. Uh, there's crimes, there's so many things, but everything could be solved by education, by information, and by, I think the earliest possible time is when the children are still young in order to install that right. safety, uh, basic fundamental uh, yeah. rights that they have. Establishing a foundation. Exactly, so basically, uh, yeah. my last uh, few words I would say, uh, I will dedicate my time for the uh, people that live in Ward 6 at any particular problem that they may have, even though my first priority is education. But they could call me at any time at 510-1364, uh, and they could give me any kind of a question if they want further information in detail. So uh, I thank you very much uh, for interviewing me. It was great, and okay. uh, I hope uh, November 14 that uh, people will uh, make the right choice. And thank you for sharing your insights with the public. And uh, again, just to repeat, further discussion on the topic, uh, on any of the topics with Mr. Kiriakou will be at 5101364. Thank you, and best wishes for success in the upcoming election, Mr. Kiriakou. Thank you very much.
Ladies and gentlemen, it is indeed a pleasure to speak to you today regarding the municipal election in Scarborough. There are two commissioners plus a mayor who represent you on the Public Utilities Commission. I would like to be your voice as commissioner to serve you in the best possible way over the next three years. I have three points to discuss with you today, which are my background and experience, number two, why I want to serve you in this position, three, what I'll do for you if you elect me. First, in regards to my background, I reside with my wife Patricia and daughter Kathy in Scarborough and I have lived in the city for 25 years. I have taught at Sir John A. Macdonald and R.H. King Collegiates, as well as recently at the Galloway Public School. I am the owner of a small business in the city which helps me to understand the needs, the concerns and the importance of the business community, which creates jobs and service as well. For two years, I served the Scarborough community as a city alderman. While in that position, I contributed to the life of our city as a founding chairman of the Scarborough Tourism and Convention Board, and I also represented you on the Scarborough Public Library. My experience with the city budget of the city will assist me in dealing with the PUC budget deliberations. In 1983, I helped to raise $14,000 from the private sector in order to fund the Scarborough Day at the CNE. This was a great day, and I had the honor of representing you, the city, as the master of ceremonies. We had 13 buses that carried seniors to the, P to the CNE, and these buses were fully paid for by the private sector. What really is amazing is the fact that we had money left over, which was turned over to the city coffers. Where do you hear that these days? My second point is why am I asking for your vote in this election? The reason is that I want to be part of the process that brings hydro and the water to you in the most cost-efficient manner, and I seek this challenge to continue my interest in serving the public you. Thirdly, what will I do if you elect me as your commissioner? It's extremely important to address the safety concerns that we all share. All street lighting should be eventually changed over to high-pressure sodium, which is better and more economical to operate. I've always been concerned about the lighting in our streets and when I was the alderman I pushed very hard and we were able to increase the lighting between Eglinton and Lawrence. A concern that has brought, been brought to my attention is the need for better lighting in parts of our city and in our parks. We all know that dark shadows invite danger. I would like to discuss this concern with you and the city government to see what can be done to make the, safe, the, the city safer for all our residents. I make a pledge today that I will do everything possible to hold the line on rates and keep a constant eye on the bottom line. I understand that because of the excellent management, Scarborough has one of the lowest rates for utilities in all of Metro. We must continue to ensure that our administrative costs are in line with other utilities. We have both hydro and water under our utilities portfolio, which is unique. Therefore, it is important to watch closely our tendering process. Contracting out of services that we can provide should be closely monitored since we have the equipment and personnel to carry out most tasks that are asked of us. In closing, I would like to take this opportunity to pay tribute to the excellent level of service provided to you by the PUC and their staff under the very capable leadership of the former chairman, Dick Cavanaugh. His style of running the PUC in a businesslike manner is one which is worth continuing and I would like to follow in that tradition. Thank you. At this time, I'd like you to meet a gentleman who has been a Public Utilities Commissioner for 12 years and is seeking re-election. His name is Doug Beatty. And Doug, you have had a lot of experience as, uh, what was it, 35 years at the Toronto Hydro that you worked down there, and you've been, as we said, 12 years a PUC Commissioner. How important is experience to that job? Well, I always felt that your first term in office, regardless of what uh, position you're going to fill, y your first term is a training session. If you can come in with the experience at the beginning, you're eliminating a lot of that training. And you can get ready, ready to work for the people of Scarborough. Well, is there that much to the job that you have to know? I know a lot of people get the idea, you know, that a PUC commissioner just sort of walks in, signs a few papers, picks up a paycheck, and goes home. <laughs> 
it's it's quite a responsible job. Uh, if you think in terms of uh, shareholders uh, uh, electing directors to run their operation, it's a similar arrangement. The commissioner is actually a director of a utility that the people own. And how big a utility is that? What kind of money are we talking? Our, our uh, budget for 94 uh, was $409 million. $409 million. $409 million. And how many people work for the Public Utilities uh, Commission? There's 529. That includes some temporary staff. 529 employees here in yes. Scarborough. So it is a fairly responsible job. Now what is the job of a commissioner really? Well the job really is to oversee the operation of the utility on, on, for the uh, shareholders, which is the customer. Uh, it's a pretty responsible job. For example, you can be held accountable now if in the Health and Safety Act. If one of your employees gets injured, you can be uh, charged with uh, an offense. Okay. You've lived in Scarborough now quite a while. Forty years. And you've seen the whole city grow. I know both of us have been here for roughly that time. And when we first came here, it was a city. But Well, it wasn't a city in those days and it's become a city. What has this done to the public utilities, to the hydro and the water, uh, this growth and expansion all the time? Well, we have grown to be one of the major utilities in Canada, and by the way, one of the finest operated utilities in Canada. Uh, we're envy of many. But this it, uh, continual expansion must have put quite a strain on the facilities of the Commission. Yes, we've had to increase. You know, if sometimes you uh, add to your service in your home, you've got to increase the size of the service. We've had to install transformer stations to accommodate extra load and, and put in new pole lines, etc. Now, the commission is responsible for what? The hydroelectric that I get in my house and also the water that comes through the yes, taps? Yes, yes. Just explain to us now, where do you get the hydro from? In other words, what is the process that it comes to us here in Scarborough. Well, we buy our, our electrical energy from Ontario Hydro, and we buy our water from Metro Toronto. You buy it from the, you buy it actually sort of like as if you went to a store and bought it in That's, bulk yes, sort of yes. thing? Yes, you, you buy it and you distribute it. You break it down and distribute the electrical energy. All right, we've been hearing recently about the Ontario Hydro, now that you've mentioned it, about them having to cut back and about this uh, huge debt they have and how it, and is that going to affect me as a consumer? Yes, they're, they're $38 billion in debt and that debt belongs to you and I. We're, we're the owners of Ontario Hydro. That is as a taxpayer, not as, as a uh, no, PUC. No, as a consumer, the tax doesn't come out of your tax dollars. Oh, it doesn't? It's just the energy. Okay, so what is that going to do if they cut back? Is that going to affect the amount of hydro that I have? No, I, I don't think Gordon is really affected too much. I, uh, they're going to cut back, perhaps. Is, why are they cutting back? Well, there's a reduction in the load. We have lost a lot of load in, in Ontario, uh, as you know, the recession. Uh, the cut back likely is, um, is, is a must. They have to do it. Maybe perhaps <laughs> I've never been involved in the management of Ontario Hydro, but perhaps they were overstaffed to begin with. Okay, now let's talk about water just for a moment. Where does that come from and how come we, uh, do you buy that too? We buy the water from Metropolitan Toronto and uh, I believe it's one of the, uh, our water in Scarborough and in, in Metro is clean water. Uh, you hear all different people talking about bottled water and filters and what have you, but we have clean water. Even though the water is too polluted for us to swim in, the filtration is such that by the time it reaches my house, it's perfectly safe. We're assured by Metro that that water is perfectly safe. I remember a couple of years ago, somebody made a statement that the water in the tap was even better than the water that you bought in some of the bottles. Yeah, that's what it, there was tests conducted last year that proved to be the case in some of the bottled waters. What is the biggest challenge facing the Public Utilities Commission for the future? I think the biggest challenge is, is to reduce rates. Like if we're going to draw industry back to Ontario, if we're going to draw industry back to Scarborough, they're looking at the total package. How much am I paying for taxes? How much am I paying for hydro? And if you can keep that a reduced package, we're going to have people come back to Scarborough. Now, as we say, you've been here for 40 years. You're married. You have a family. 
you appreciate the dollar like any other homeowner or any other resident of Scarborough. And I guess rates is the thing that most people ask you about, do they? I've never had anyone <coughs> uh, complain about our low rates. They always complain that they're too high. And yet in metropolitan Toronto, we're one of the lowest for, uh, in hydro and for water. Is that right? We are, yes. Okay. Through good management of the utility, by the way. Well, obviously management has a lot to do with the end cost of any product. Yes, that's true. Yeah. And we have to think of hydro as being a product and water as being a product, right. which sometimes <coughs> we don't. We just sort of think it comes there. Yes. yes. <laughs> okay. Let's um, think just for a minute, though, of the future of in Scarborough. Can we handle any future expansion without any problems to our we can. We, we, we have the capacity to handle uh, additional load. And I, I hope <coughs> that we, as, as Scarborough expands, we have lots of room for new business. Now, let's get back to the job of being a commissioner <coughs> for just a moment. I understand that you've been up there for 12 years and you have a 100% uh, attendance record for all the meetings. Tell us something about the actual job of being a commissioner. How many meetings do you go to? What do you have to do? and so on. Well, in the 12 years I have, as you know, 100% attendance. I've never missed a meeting. Uh, what we have, we get an agenda sent to us prior to the uh, official meeting, and we usually meet every two weeks. And you have to research your agenda. You have to look to see uh, what the situations are. Are they justified? Can you improve on them? Uh, it's quite a job. I, I spend days researching each item on the agenda. And how often do you meet as a, a group? There's three of, three of you, actually. There's one other commissioner like yourself that's elected and the mayor. Is that correct? That's true. And as you know, uh, the other two are not seeking re-election, which uh, I'm disappointed. But of course, this is uh, what they desire. It's very important that whoever runs for this office has the time. Uh, I'm truly concerned about people that don't have time to run for the office and yet they don't realize what's involved. For example, I don't think any of my opponents that I'm aware of have ever attended a meeting or read our minutes. Okay, and how often do you meet? We usually meet every two weeks, year round. Re year round? Year round, yes. Officially, you don't have any holidays, do you? That's right, you have to look for a spot to even get two weeks holidays. And you can sneak one So in. you know what my 100% <laughs> attendance has done to me. I know what yes. you mean. All right, we only have about a, a minute or so left. How would you like to speak directly to the people of Scarborough, the voters of Scarborough, and we hope there's going to be a lot more of them this year than there has been in the past? I, uh, I hope we do get a good turnout. It's very, municipal politics is very important. It plays a big role in our lives, and usually some of these politicians move on to other levels. But with my experience and with the other two uh, have decided not to run, uh, I would love to seek office for another term. I think I have the experience, I have the dedication, I'm committed to doing a good job for the people of Scarborough. So I'm hoping that on November the 14th they will select me once more to represent them. Thank you very much. And thank you. You've had the opportunity to meet with and listen to Doug Beattie who is seeking re-election as a commissioner for the public utilities. He has 12 years experience and he's looking for your vote. So November the 14th is election day. Remember the name, Doug Beatty. Thank you, Doug. Thank you very much. Hello, my name is Lorraine Blue and I'm running for the position of Scarborough Public Utilities Commissioner in the upcoming municipal elections on Monday, November the 14th. You, the people of Scarborough, will be electing two people to represent your interests for a three-year term. You may be asking yourself, what are the roles and responsibilities of a utility commissioner? Briefly, I'll explain these. The commissioners supervise the retail sale of electricity and water within the city of Scarborough. They establish policies, set local electricity and water rates. They monitor finances, approve capital expenditures, and oversee the staff in handling the utilities' activities. The Scarborough Public Utilities Commission is required to meet its financial obligations from its own resources through rates and charges, not from taxation revenue from you, the public. 
They have due regard for the customer's needs and service concerns, and also they're concerned about their employees and public health and safety needs, as well as concerns about the environment that we live in. Commissioners must also be aware of federal and provincial legislation and municipal regulations that may affect the operation of the utility. Why do I want to be elected to this position? I believe that I am the best candidate to be your representative. I am accessible, accountable, and aware of your concerns and the issues and legislation that affect the Public Utilities Commission in Scarborough. I've been a resident of Scarborough for over 30 years with my family. I have over seven years experience representing the needs and concerns of individuals and small businesses at Toronto City Council and the various standing committees as a lobbyist. I have worked with a Metro Councillor developing proposals for an independent study in urban politics to assist the public in being environmentally conscious with regards to water and electrical consumption. I'm also a teacher and I've been teaching in Scarborough and the surrounding areas for over the past seven years. I have received three university degrees and have international business experience in Europe and in North America. Business experience which will be of substantial benefit to both myself and you, the electorate that I would be representing. Briefly, my degrees include a Bachelor of Arts degree in Canadian Studies and Political Science from the University of Toronto's Scarborough campus, a Bachelor of Education degree from the University of Toronto, and finally, an International Master's in Business Administration from a university in Europe. My international business background, as well as my experience as an educator, will allow me to be interested to be representing the needs and concerns of Scarborough residents with regards to the public utility rates and related issues. I want to be accountable and accessible to you, the public, as a spokesperson for your concerns and your educational needs. I'll be a source of information to the public on how to reduce your utility rates in your homes. For example, low flow shower heads, caulking and insulation, and other environmentally friendly lighting that you may not currently be aware of that could save you costs in the long run. I will keep abreast of the issues and the relevant legislation that affects us all as consumers of public utilities. I will remain interested in maintaining an awareness of environmental friendliness as it relates to public utilities. Finally, I want to have water meters installed outside of every home in Scarborough. Currently, new homes are installed with outdoor water meters. There is a cost of $75 to people who reside in older homes and request installation of water meters on the outside of their home. I want to install these water meters at a very low cost to all Scarborough residents, possibly no charge at all if it's economically feasible due to economies of scale. In today's society, with increased crime, where single people, the elderly, and physically challenged people live alone, it's sometimes very scary to let unknown people enter your home to read your water meters. In winter, it's also inconvenient to have people enter your home with snow and slush on their boots, etc. A lot of people are also out when the meter readers come to read the amount and record the consumption of your water. By installing outdoor water meters, this can only lead to an increased security to the people who reside in Scarborough, safety to all electorate, as well as an additional efficiency via time saving to the Public Utilities Commission of Scarborough. We already have a wonderful service from the Scarborough Public Utilities Commission but this might be a way to further enhance and reduce costs in these tough times. In closing, I want to hear about your concerns, your needs, and other issues that you're interested in expressing to me as the electorate as they relate to Scarborough Public Utilities Commission. Come out to all the All Candidates meetings. Meet me. I'd love to hear from you and hear your concerns. Or if you cannot attend these meetings, please phone me at 416-759 9895. Or if you have a fax, you can fax me at 416-759-7353. On Monday, November the 14th, please remember to vote for Lorraine Blue for the position of Scarborough Public Utilities Commissioner. Thank you.
Good evening. My name is Wanda Halliday. I have Joe Sang with me this evening. He is a candidate for the Scarborough Public Utilities. Um, Joe is a Scarborough resident and has been for 15 years. He's married with three children, has a BSc from McMaster's, and has been working for Bell Canada for the past 15 years. Currently, he is a director with Bell Sigma. Joe's involvement with his community includes being the president of the Gold Hawk Community Association, as well as being part of the Gold Hawk Park Library Committee and director of the Scarborough Neighborhood Watch. He has also worked extensively with the Metro Police and is chairman of the 42nd Division Chinese Community Liaison Committee and co-chairman and co-chair of the Metro Police Youth Volleyball Tournament. As a result of these activities, Joe has been presented with Crime Prevention, Crime Ontario and Provincial Awards. Now, Joe, can you give me some reasons as to why you are seeking the nomination? Uh, this is a very good question, Wanda. Uh, people have been talking to me and asked me to run for this position because they were not happy about the performance from the Scarborough Public Utility Commissioner. Then when you look at the root cause of all this problem, you think that there should be a change in leadership to lead us into the 21st century. And I also view it as a part of the civic duty and uh, my personal uh, public service uh, journey. Okay. And can you tell us a little about uh, your mandates and issues? Well, my mandates are an issue are, the first thing is I want to stabilize the utility rates, that's, mean, that's the hydro and water rates. During the past four years, every year the water rate has gone up. Mm -hmm. And during the past four years, three years, the hydro rate has gone up. So I want to make sure that we are asking ourselves very tough questions to make sure that we could minimize the increases and look at the existing process and we could deliver the service at the lowest rate to the residents. Mm -hmm. The second issue is I want to see a continuous improvement process in place for services. Every time when there's a hydro failure, it inconvenience the residents and it costs the business a lot also. It also may cost a lot to the resident because of spoilage on the food. So I want to make sure the utility commissioner will develop a long-term strategic plan to continue to provide stable servers. Mm -hmm. The third point is to try to make the organization more customer focused and to address the customer needs. And I would like to see continuous uh, customer survey and see how satisfied are they with the uh, services. And I would like to provide the opportunity to communicate the result back to the customers. And my other point is trying to provide value added service at less cost or existing cost. I would like to use my private sector experience mm -hmm. to deliver and implement value added service to the customers. And another point is to revitalize the business in Scarborough. I don't think the city could do it alone. Everybody has a part in it, and the utility could play a very critical part in it. They could provide uh, competitive rate and extraordinary service to the business that they would like to come to Scarborough. The other thing is trying to improve the Scarborough image. I think we could be a very effective partner in promoting Scarborough image. I remember last year when we had the PC Fax campaign to sign up the business in Scarborough. The number of business which sign up from the insert which Hydro mail out has quadrupled the subscription to PC Fax. Mm -hmm. So on November 14, before the election, I will suggest to the residents to ask themselves a few questions. Are they happy about the public utility service performance? Do you think you have the leadership to lead the public utility to the 21st century? I would like to have an opportunity to serve the community and to be a partnership to reshape the utility organization and the city image. Well, thank you very much, Joe, and uh, good luck in your election campaign, and we'll see you November the 14th. Thanks a lot, Andre.
Hello, my name is Harry Leslie. I'm a candidate for Scarborough, Pu Scarborough Public Utilities Commissioner. I'd like to tell you why I want to run for this position. When I was a teenager, I went for a tour of the filtration plant. I was surprised to find at the end of the tour that we only treat the water biologically. We don't take any of the chemicals or lead or mercury out of the water. Having said that, I understand that most people realize there are many contaminants in the water we drink out of the tap. The uh, incumbents for the commission have taken the tack that it's a metro responsibility for water, which is true, they do supply it and filter it. However, I would like to uh, have the Scarborough Utility Commission look into supplying information on our water bill, both the guidelines that the government lays out for quantities of lead, mercury, etc., and then tell us the results on a bi-monthly basis of what's in the water, including contaminants which may or may not be considered a risk to your health so that we can decide what we'd, whether we'd like to treat the water further with filters or not. If I was elected as your utility commissioner, one of the first things I would do is to look, look into surveying everybody to see if anybody was interested in receiving a home water filter, have it billed on their account. Now, of course, I'd have to have the support of the other commissioners, which would be the mayor and the second utility commissioner you'll, you'll be voting for on November 14th. If my plan to go ahead with using home water filter units is accepted, first we'd want to do the survey, and then do some fact-finding on the filters that are available in the marketplace. Perhaps we could endorse some of these, or endorse all filters. Perhaps we could just send out coupons. But any rate, I'd like them, I would like the utility to cooperate with filter companies and the residents to look into doing something about the water. We know that there's lead, mercury, PCBs, dioxin in our water supply. And the government has laid out guidelines of how much can be available in the water. Now, we know that we can reduce these further by using filters. I say we should do it. We may not have the legal obligation, but we do have the ethical obligation to clean up the water as best we can. Now, some contaminants may be better off to be filtered at the plant. However, most water doesn't go for consumption. Most of it goes on cars, toilets, bathtubs, lawns, swimming pools, and for industry. If you feel that what I'm, what I'm saying about the water supply at the moment is right and we should do something further about it, please vote for me in, in the coming election. Now remember you get two votes for your public utilities commissioner. I'd encourage you to use one vote to vote for your hydro commissioner. And I would encourage you to vote for me, Harry Leslie, as your water commissioner. Thank you very much. this November the 14th. Watch Trillium Community 10's mayoralty debate, Monday, October the 31st at 9 p.m. Tuesday, November the 1st at 7 p.m. Saturday, November the 5th at 2 p.m. And on Thursday, November the 10th at 10 p.m. Trillium Community 10, your election connection. Good day. My name is John Wardrobe. I'm seeking the position of counselor in Ward 3, City of Scarborough. I'd like to spend the next few moments with you discussing the issues that I feel are very, very important to the people in not only Ward 3, but the City of Scarborough. I've had six years experience working with the council and staff at City Hall. That coupled with my business experience, I feel I have the experience to bring about a lot of solutions to a lot of problems that face us today. I've had um, the pleasure of going around door knocking, speaking to a number of people within the uh, War Three area, a lot of whom are on a fixed income. I believe that the tax burden that these people are bearing up to today really is too much. I don't want to myself feel that I'm responsible in any way, shape, or form for making these people 
uh, lose their home, sell their home, or even take in people from outside, strangers in their home. The uh, issues, as I've outlined, are tax reduction, job creation, uh, safer streets, the quality of life. Tax reduction can be brought about by proper management of our services and our personnel. I do believe that the city has to learn to promote itself, to create growth and development. This in itself will hopefully attract new business, retain the businesses that we have now, and help create jobs and strengthen our fast eroding tax base. Ladies and gentlemen, just for one example, we have a, a plant that closed down, well known to everyone. Not only did we lose 3,000 jobs, but we lost an awful lot of our tax base. The property, when it was in full operation, paid $3.9 million a year to the city. They closed down, that became $2 million. To my knowledge, they're breaking the buildings down, destroying them, they're removing them, and that's going to drop it down to less than a half a million. That really, to me, uh, tells me that there's a deficit right there on that one application for three and a half million dollars. Who's going to pick up that deficit? You and I as taxpayers. And I think it's about time we took the steps necessary to prevent this. I know that there are, have been 12,000 jobs lost in the city of Scarborough over the past few years. And if you equate the numbers, the 12,000, you know, compared to the 3,000, and because of the 3,000 jobs lost, we lose 3.5 million. 12,000 jobs very quickly represents 14 to 15 million dollars that we've lost on our tax base, adding further burden to those of us that are paying taxes on our homes. A city that is healthy must maintain a good balance of industrial, commercial, and residential. If the industrial and commercial starts to erode, then who's going to pick up that deficit? Who's going to pick up the pressure? The taxpayer living in a three-bedroom or two-bedroom bungalow. There's other issues that have come to bear. Uh, safer streets. I think we can address these concerns and these problems by going to the experts, the police department. Police department working with the communities and politicians, although sometimes I feel that maybe we've had too much political interference with the police. I do believe that, uh, again, that the expertise lies with those policemen or, or police department, and they can advise and recommend the proper approach to certain uh, problems. Uh, the other one is site plan. You know, right now the city seems to feel that buildings have to be pushed towards the street. I don't believe this. I think they should be pushed to the back. You're, if you push the building to the front, we have a parking lot at the back. There's not always good lighting. And if anyone goes in there at night, they're in a very dangerous situation. I think this can be worked on to improve that situation. I know personally I wouldn't want my wife or my family, anyone, going into that situation. It also adds to vandalism, etc. Because, you know, when you're in there and you say your car breaks down, you definitely have a problem because you're not in sight of anyone. The other uh, issues that I, I've dealt with uh, are envir environmental. I believe there's various uh, uh, programs that we can uh, start off with, uh, make the children aware through education at home and through awareness programs at the school. I had the pleasure of uh, sitting on uh, a task force that was called the Fishery Task Force. We worked very, very hard uh, to promote clean water. We tried, in a, in a way, to approach uh, the uh, water situation as it exists today and try and bring it back to its natural state, or as close as possible. One of the events that we uh, had was uh, a fish release day. We had children, I think, numbers around 200 from the various schools. We had seniors down there to make sure that they didn't fall in the river. And what happened was uh, the one little girl that I had the pleasure of assisting, she had uh, a small bucket. It was dipped into a large tank with some fish, and there was two fish there. And I never saw anyone so pleased with herself that she was that close to fish. I don't think she'd ever seen fish before, or at least that close. And I had the pleasure of walking her down the bank to the river, releasing those fish, 
And ladies and gentlemen, the look on that girl's face, it made every minute that I spent on that program and that task force very worthwhile. I wish I, I had more time to get into more detail, but ladies and gentlemen, uh, again, I'd like to reiterate the major issues in, that face us here in Scarborough today. Tax reduction, job creation, safer streets, and the quality of life. They're in my brochure. Please take the time to read that brochure. On the back of it, you'll find my phone number from my campaign office, as well as the address. We're on Lawrence, just a little bit east of pharmacy. Please, if you have any questions or concerns, call me. You may not get me right away because I'm on the street knocking on doors trying to talk to as many people as possible, but I would appreciate hearing from you. And please, if you want to, drop down to the campaign office. We have coffee on most of the time, so you're very welcome to uh, stop by. But please, whatever you do, get out there and vote. Your vote is very important. 14th of November. We'll see you then. Thank you very much for your time. Hello, dear neighbors and residents of Ward 3. I'm City Councillor Mike Zekas. I would like to begin by thanking you for the support and encouragement you have given me as your Scarborough City Councillor these past three years. I am seeking re-election as your City Councillor with a profound respect and regard for the trust that you have placed in me as your representative at City Hall and in our community. Working for you, I stayed true to the goals that we had agreed to in 1991, together, to getting the job done with integrity, to giving you and every other citizen in Ward 3 strong, energetic, full-time political commitment, to being accountable to you as taxpayers and making prudent decisions on the spending of your tax dollars while showing compassion for the quality of your lives in our community to promoting land development that made sense and encouraging new business growth opportunities for economic recovery, to fighting bad rezoning and bad redevelopment, to being available to all residents by phone 24 hours a day, and to seeking solutions to your problems tirelessly, to not being baited in the media nor swayed by the negativity of others whose agendas, political or otherwise, deterred from the overall good of our Ward 3, and to viewing even those shortcomings positively as incentives for doing right by you and doing good for you, my constituents. The Ward 3 that we had envisioned together in 1991 is moving forward towards 2001, not without reevaluation, but moving ahead nonetheless. As a result, there is a lot to be said about our community that is tremendously encouraging and very positive. I want to continue saying it and making it even better. I have worked hard for you at City Hall and with you in our community. Still I ask for your support again on election day, mindful of the great regard for further work that is needed to ensure that the vision of Ward 3 as one of the most li livable communities in Scarborough remains. In this election, you will be able to judge from all candidates running for Ward 3 Councillor whose past actions and past activities, whose current ideals and achievements, and whose future vision you respond to best and value most. I know that all candidates who ask for your trust and support carry with them different points of view that will come out in the campaign and in the debates, and I'm looking forward to that. For in each candidate's points of view, you will discover whether they can truly envision what's best for Scarborough and Ward 3 in the year 2001, or whether they are hopelessly locked in the past. It will be my priority in the new term of City Council to place emphasis on issues that positively affect our local community, our residential neighborhoods, our commercial and industrial districts, and our role in Scarborough. There is work still to be done in these areas, and I want to use my enthusiasm and energy to get it done. As at City Hall, I will remain an outspoken advocate for neighborhoods and taxpayers, and for the little guy, the underdog. I'm not afraid to challenge what needs to be challenged, nor shy away from setting right what needs to be corrected. I have a healthy intolerance for injustice, and I refuse to be silenced from speaking out on your behalf 
for the sake of political expediency. The politics of compromise to suit a political situation, that's not a healthy compromise at all. That's selling out. I won't compromise your best interests. Someone might say, nobody's perfect. My response is, strive to be perfectly ethical and stick to your beliefs. One of those beliefs is that Ward 3 can continue to prosper and grow by facing challenges ahead through a managed change that includes the participation of its citizens. I am confident that many of you share that truth as well as many others with me. That's because so many of those truths were forged in me from hearing your concerns in the thousands over the last three years, either by telephone or from you personally in my office. And if I was busy because of city council or standing committee meetings, Linda Stewart, my full-time office assistant and sometimes miracle worker, was calmly providing easy guidance and assistance to your questions or aggressively, aggressively pursuing solutions to your problems with city staff. Hearing people's plights day in, day out has made us both more sensitive to your needs and also more respectful of the enormous responsibility that comes with the job. It's a task that Linda Stewart and I don't treat lightly. Officially, the 1994 municipal election began on October 14, 1994. In the weeks ahead, I will be canvassing door to door to meet with you personally and discuss any issues that are important to you in this election, or just to say hi again and to thank you for your unfailing support. I will also be distributing another brochure in the next few weeks, reviewing my work and goals that were accomplished on your behalf in the ward and city, and to give you an overview for the next three years. And finally, dear neighbor, on election day, Monday, November the 14th, I will ask for your vote to re-elect me as your city councillor so that the ongoing work that still needs doing in Ward 3 can get done, so that the, posi the positive vision of a more livable community can continue, and so that you can continue in the knowledge of having a dedicated and sincere municipal representative at City Hall. On November the 14th, vote for a proven community leader. Vote City Councillor Mike Zekas. Thank you. My name is Lorenzo Berardinetti. I'm the councillor for Ward 4 in Scarborough, and I welcome this opportunity to uh, address the people of Ward 4 and, of course, the rest of the people in Scarborough who will be watching this, uh, this particular program today and uh, to say a few things about my term as a councillor and also to suggest some of the ideas which I hope to implement in the years to come as uh, your councillor in Ward 4. First and foremost, I'd like to thank the people in Ward 4 for giving me the opportunity to represent them at City Hall since 1988. The experience has been a very challenging and something that I've enjoyed greatly. I've learned a great deal from it and uh, I've had a chance to meet many, many very interesting people in our community. What's important to me today, during our short time together, I understand I have up to 10 minutes to speak. And during this time, I'd like to basically touch upon some of the accomplishments of the past and, again, some of the ideas which I wish to bring forward in the upcoming years. First and foremost, the accomplishments that I'm most proud of is to have the opportunity to work with individual constituents on individual problems, whether it be fixing a curb, fixing a driveway, working on uh, sewage problems, working on garbage collection or taxation problems, 
uh, I enjoy meeting with you and I enjoy the opportunity to speak with you either in person or over the phone or through correspondences such as letters or faxes. I think the people in the community, uh, almost all of them are very reasonable. We all obviously sometimes have problems that are difficult to solve and that's why we have counselors. But for the most part, the people that uh, I deal with are very level-headed, uh, very reasonable and uh, quite intelligent and articulate with their problems. And I must say that I've enjoyed trying as much as possible to solve and at least to deal with those problems. In Ward 4, we have a, an older community made up of people that, uh, like my parents, uh, came into the community back in the 50s or early 60s. Uh, my parents actually moved into the area in the early 60s, uh, and I came along with them. And I've grown up in the area, and I've seen it change a great deal. However, for the most part, a lot of the people that came here uh, in the 50s and early 60s have remained in our community. And uh, when I knock on doors or visit people or talk with them, they tell me the different stories about our community and how it's changed over the years. I'm well aware of the fact that our community has changed over the years and that it will continue to change. One of the most important things in being in politics is to realize change itself and the fact that as a politician you have to deal with change. Uh, some of the other things in our community that uh, I've noticed over the past while, the changes and the growth, have been an influx of, of new immigrants that have come into our area. Most of us are tolerant of this and have accepted it um, and have welcomed the new people into our community from other countries. This is continuing to happen throughout Scarborough and Ward 4, of course, is no exception. Uh, as your counselor, I, I deal with all of the people in the area, whether they are new citizens or people who have been here for a long time. And I enjoy, again, uh, working with the different uh, people from the different uh, uh, colorful ethnic backgrounds, all of the different uh, backgrounds. Some of the changes and some of the things that I've worked on in the past have included the formation of the Kennedy Road Business Improvement Area, which was formed in 1989 and which continues to thrive. I think it's important that business be given every opportunity to expand and to grow. Because when business grows and when business expands, we have more jobs available for our young people, for our old people, for all the people in our area and from other parts of Scarborough and indeed even from other parts of Metro. What's also important with the expansion of business is that it creates extra taxation. And with that extra assessment or taxation, we use that money to help improve the services in our city here in Scarborough. Also, as your counselor, I've worked to make sure that our parks are well looked after. Goodlad Park now has appropriate lighting, has uh, new trees planted, and has a very full playground and a very active field house. I think the recreation activities are important for our young people, for our seniors, and for all those concerned who live in our area. The Mid Scarborough Community Center is also located in Ward 4, and I've ensured that that community center has continued to be maintained uh, in an appropriate way so that the different uh, um, facilities inside that community center can be utilized to their ut utmost potential. Uh, McGregor Park is also an area that uh, I have found uh, is very important to our community and I've worked with to see that new playground equipment and uh, other things have uh, been placed in there so that the park is well, well utilized. There are also smaller community parks in other parts of our ward and uh, I've ensured that the parks are well looked after and I must commend the Recreation Parks Department here in our city for doing a good job with those parks. Other things of importance that we've worked upon in the, in the city is the maintenance of our roads and in particularly the smaller roads within the subdivisions to ensure that the roads are paved when uh, it's appropriate to do so, the appropriate time period, and also that the sidewalks are, are maintained and the curbs are also looked after. It may sound as tedious or, or, or mundane work, but it's very important when your home is on that particular road. I myself am a home homeowner in the area, and I realize the importance of having a good neighborhood, a good street, and good sidewalks, and, uh, and good curbs, of course. Um, as a homeowner as well, I've had the experience, the pleasure, of uh, seeing uh, what it is like to experience the different uh, responsibilities of owning a home. And one of the most important, I guess, is the paying of property taxes. As a property tax payer, 
I too am concerned, like you and like everyone else, to ensure that those property taxes are maintained at a uh, low rate and that they are not increased without uh, a very good reason. In the last three years on Council, we have had two 0% increases for the Scarborough portion of taxes. As your councillor in the future, I will ensure that those property taxes are maintained at that 0% increase, or perhaps, if possible, in the future, to even look at ways of rolling back the expenditures even further so that we can look at tax cuts. Unfortunately, as a city councillor, I have no impact on the Scarborough education or the, Scar or the Metro Toronto government portion of the taxes, which make up almost 77 or 78 percent of the taxes. So these are various areas that I've, I've looked at and, and worked with in the community and will continue to work with uh, in the uh, years to come in the future. Also, we have a health department in the city of Scarborough. And the health department offers all sorts of services to our people and to the community at large, whether it be in the schools or also with our senior citizens. I think it's important to ensure that the health department continue to interact with people with our communities to ensure that a, a minimum standard of health at least is maintained and that the people of our community are looked after. People are often very concerned and have come to me and spoken about neighborhood safety. I've worked with the police department to ensure that we have community-based policing and the Kennedy Eglinton area and in other parts of our ward. I will ensure that in the future that continues. The people in our community are concerned about crime and the increase in crime in our area. I fully support our police department, the efforts that they put, and I will hope that in the future uh, we can persuade the Metro government, which funds the police department, to put more policemen to work in our Scarborough area, as we have the lowest per capita uh, number of policemen in our area. These are just some of the areas that I've worked upon, and uh, I hope to continue to work in the future. If you need to reach me, uh, my, my number is uh, available. At, uh, at, at City Hall, and also I have a campaign office number uh, which uh, you can obtain through my literature. In closing, I'd like to say that it's been a pleasure again to serve the community for the past six years as your councillor. I've grown a great deal during my time. I've learned a great deal, and it has been a pleasure to work with the people in Ward 4 and throughout Scarborough, because I, I truly believe that this is a great place to make my home and in the future to raise my family and my children. So I thank you, and God bless you. Bye-bye. Make an informed decision this November the 14th. Watch Trillium Community 10's mayoralty debate, Monday, October the 31st at 9 p.m. Tuesday, November the 1st at 7 p.m. Saturday, November the 5th at 2 p.m and on Thursday, November the 10th at 10 p.m. Trillium Community 10, your election connection. Good evening. I'm Paul Crawford. I'm running for councillor, city councillor, in Ward 5. You've probably seen me at your doorway by now. You've probably seen some of my literature and possibly some of my signs. What I've been doing for the last month is going door to door, talking to you, asking you what your concerns are. As some of you know by now, I did run in the last election in Ward 5, and I finished second to the incumbent Marilyn Musinski, who of course is running for mayor this term. So I brought myself back here. I also want you to know that after the election was over, I didn't stop my community activities. I've been extremely busy during that time. What I'd like to do in the few minutes that I have is sort of relate my experiences to what you have told me are your concerns. One of the concerns is jobs, jobs leaving Scarborough, jobs in general. Well, I sell throughout Scarborough and throughout the East End, and I've been doing that for 15 to 20 years for a transportation company. So I call on the businesses in Scarborough, and I've learned what their concerns are. I would like to see councillors in the next term spend more time calling on 
their customers, namely what I call customers, the industries to find out what their needs are so that our customers aren't drifting away to other municipalities without us knowing what we should be doing about it. Property taxes and taxes in general. I've been concerned with property taxes since I moved into Scarborough eight years ago. My experiences has been that taxes are high, but also many of the taxes in Scarborough are not fair and equitable. I have been fighting that over the years through all the sources that it can be fought through. It's almost a joke. I could write a book about it. This is good for you because if you decide to do the same thing or if you need advice on it, I can give it to you in very short order. Apartments and houses. This was a very big thing when I was running before was basement apartments, we called it at that time, and not so much basement apartments, but sometimes the symptoms that overcrowding creates and the impact on our neighborhoods. Well, now we have Bill 163, and let's hope that it has the necessary ingredients in it for us to control the symptoms of apartments and houses. Property standards are very closely related to that. People want their neighborhoods to be nice. They want the grass cut on the medians. They want garbage pickup. They don't want their streets littered with garbage. This is something that a counselor can do by networking with their communities, finding the ones that are having the problems, and dealing with them on an ad hoc basis. So many of the neighborhoods in Ward 5 and in Scarborough are just excellent. The city has got to be the second greatest city on earth, and we could be first sometime in the future. All we have to do is take advantage of the benefits that we have, and those benefits include people and space. Space, the future. Education always comes up. Education has got to be everybody's concern. Education and the trustees. I joined a group called SNAP, Scarborough Needs Accountable Politicians, whose specific goal was to do something about the trustees to make it a position that is more accountable to, to the people and to do what we want them to do. That's one of the benefits of networking. I've also become involved with a group called the Alliance of Community Groups. And basically what we're doing there is where you don't have an association or where your association is maybe a, not as strong as it should be, that way you can, you can deal with the Alliance and we can do things together. And we've done many things together with associations. Things to do with planning and development. Maybe the single most factor that affects our neighborhoods and our quality of life. It's very important for us to have a knowledge of what planning and development can do for our neighborhoods and the impact that it can have on our neighborhoods. I've made a study of the official plans of Scarborough and Metro, and I've been at the OMB. I've made presentations to council. I've made presentations to Metro, presentations to the Sewell Commission to help put together a new planning act to make it more equitable for the people within the communities to speak out and to have their voices heard. One of the things that concerns me greatly is a lack of voice amongst the communities. Now that's as much our fault, the community people, as it is the bureaucracies and the levels of government that are putting impacts on our neighborhoods. So like in Pogo, someone said, I've seen the enemy and it is us. Well, I've seen the solutions and those solutions are us. And the best thing for us to do in our neighborhoods is to work together. Make sure you have an association, make sure that it stays strong. If you don't have one, then organize one. One of the things I'm going to do after I'm elected is to make sure that every neighborhood in Ward 5 and hopefully in Scarborough has a community association or a group to represent their wants and needs. If you don't have a group to represent your needs, then I'm afraid you're going to become 
part of the problem. The thing to do is to get involved and to network with other groups. This is something that I had a great deal of experience in. I didn't just strike out on my own to fight my battles on my own. I have put together groups and I have worked with other groups. The Neighborhood Watch, PC Cops, the Alliance, the Environmental Alliance, COSCA, a group that did a great job in organizing people to save the Rouge. There's all kinds of people out there that are willing to speak on behalf of communities. There's too many of us, too many of you, that have become so frustrated that you're locking yourselves in the basement, so to speak. It doesn't work that way. You're going to have to get involved. So if you're looking at me right now and you're saying, if I vote for that guy, he's going to drag me out, he's going to make me join an association, he's going to make me get involved, you're probably right. You're probably right. I almost choked on my own words. But it's so important to do that. And I've learned that through many years of getting involved and trying to get things done. And believe it or not, we do have an impact. I've never met a single person who doesn't care. I've met all kinds of people as I knock on your doors and as I go about my association duties who have said, what difference does it make? They're not going to listen to me anyway. Well, one of the reasons they don't listen is because maybe we're not organized. And what you need is someone who has had the practice. One of the things when you're butting your head against a stone wall is that you soon learn the phone numbers to call and the people that can get things done in all levels of government and they're there and they listen to groups and we can form these associations even if you don't have an association in your neighborhood nothing stops you from getting involved with the alliance the friends of scarborough the neighborhood watch and other things so be prepared in the next couple of years to get involved be prepared to get involved with the things that you've told me that are of concern to you, taxes, jobs, property standards, education, and the biggest one of all, crime and its impact on our neighborhoods. There's no reason why we can't keep our neighborhoods as great as they are. There's no reason we have to let them slip away while other departments impose things on us that we don't want. You speak together as a voice, you trust me to do that. You trust me to organize you. I've been doing it part time. I've been working very hard at it. What I want to do is I want to do it full time. I want to be able to dedicate myself to the things that I've learned. If you want to know more about me, if I haven't told you enough, if you don't believe what I've said and you want to see a schedule of the things that I've been involved in, you call my number, 297-6494. I'll either come and see you or I'll mail you something that will show you that I do have the experience that we need. Thank you very much, and thank you Trillium Cable for giving me this time. I appreciate it. Fellow residents of Scarborough, as you are aware, on November 14th, our city will be holding its municipal elections. It will be our collective task to elect representatives from within our community to serve council in our best interest. Hello, my name is Anna Maria Faria, and I am seeking counsel for Ward 5 City Councilor for Scarborough. I have lived in this community for over 11 years now. I have worked for the small businesses in the area. The City of Scarborough Revenue Tax Department served as assistant to a former federal cabinet minister and presently employed by a major financial institution. As a long-term member of this community, I have seen our city undergo numerous changes and I have come to share many of the same concerns that you probably have. I care very dearly about our community and it is a place I too have chosen to call home. I know that there are many people who work hard to build our city. 
people who volunteer in community organizations, neighbors who take pride in their community and give other neighbors and children a positive environment in which to live in, and business owners who create employment. It is precisely this type of community that I want to help build and foster, and I am prepared to work for the residents of Ward 5 to keep it that way. I am committed to a leadership style that will listen, consult, debate, then act on the issues that are at the heart of the residents' concerns. I will work hard at providing solutions and delivering results. I believe that taxpayers work hard for their tax dollars and therefore deserve the best service, representation, and value from their municipal government. Despite the economic circumstances, we need to maintain the municipal public services that we rely on. I am determined to tackle issues such as community safety, unfair tax base, and government duplication vigorously. We need action on these issues. Simply talking about them isn't enough. The knowledge and the skills that I have acquired by working for small businesses, the municipal government department, the federal government, and a major financial institution gives me unique insight which will help me fulfill the role of city councillor. Because of my background, I understand the significant roles these sectors play in our community and how government decisions often affect their overall well-being. An effective councillor in today's world needs these skills. I realize that our city is changing so rapidly, and I believe it is time that we address these issues. Concern for community safety, the current economy, and the need to promote our business community are some of the hard-pressed issues that Scarborough Council must address upon immediately. I also realize that, our, that in order to provide solutions, government, businesses and the community need to work together to have a common approach to work on and to build from. Traditional approaches will not always be effective or efficient in solving the real problems that we face today. We need real leadership which is responsible, hardworking, open to new ideas and dedicated to learning. I am committed to this type of leadership and I believe that Ward 5 residents can have confidence in electing me to represent them and to work for them in Scarborough. This election is about issues and values. What matters most is how well the person you elect is going to represent you. If you feel that the skills and qualities and ideas I will bring to council can benefit our community, then I hope I may count on your support on November 14th for Ward 5 City Councillor. Thank you. Dear neighbors, residents of Ward 5, my name is Chris Fermanis and I'm one of six registered candidates running for council seat representing Ward 5. On Thursday, October the 13th, uh, at the uh, City of Scarborough's uh, Clerk's Office, I submitted my nomination documents for the upcoming election. After I have submitted the necessary documents, uh, the clerk behind the desk asked me to step aside and uh, wait for my name to be called. As I waited, I noticed a table set up at the side of the counter with a chair behind it and a chair beside it. Uh, a young lady came behind me and asked me, if I was a candidate for the upcoming elections. I said, yes, I am running for councillor for, for Ward 5. She introduced herself as a reporter from the uh, Toronto Star. I was very impressed with the questioning uh, this uh, young lady uh, proceeded with. The question that impressed me the most was one, says, sir, what qualifies you to run for the office of councillor? I started thinking about it, and I th uh, three things came into mind. Education, experience, uh, w working in a community, knowledge of the community, as I have lived 
continuously for 22 years in this community. Yes, all of these above points were contributing factors during the decision-making process, but the main and most important reason was my concern for my community. I am concerned about the social environment that you and I raise our children. I am concerned about my parents and all seniors who feel unsafe in their own homes that they worked so hard for. I am concerned about the transformation of our neighborhoods in our community as Bill 120 is now the law and basement apartments are legally are allowed in Scarborough. One ap apartment is permitted in each house, but it's up to each municipality to determine whether it wishes to expand the, uh, beyond one apartment. Bill uh, 120 also states that landlords do not have to reside in, uh, in their home. You will hear some candidates saying that they do not agree with absentee landlords. Perhaps not, but Bill 120 is now the law throughout prov uh, this province. Residents of Ward 5, another important concern that we all share is the introduction of Bill 163. The passing of this bill will make the establishment of rooming houses in our community a reality. These are some elements that will influence how our community will be restructured. Further, I am concerned about crime, but I cannot claim that I am an expert in uh, crime prevention. I believe that community awareness through the expansion of neighborhood watch program will deter crime and make our neighborhoods safer. I do not have a 10-point program on crime prevention. I only have one point to make. Politicians must not interfere with the police. The police department has trained qualified people, allow them to do their job. Taxation is a great concern to all of us, but a greater concern also is uh, irresponsible spending. Politicians must be held accountable about their expenditures. Public housing is another concern. Yes, we, we do have land for public housing, but as taxpayers were unable to carry any more financial strains to support mon more development of public housing. We in Scarborough have the largest concentration of public housing in all of metro municipalities. Dear neighbors, these are some of the concerns that I believe we all share. Let's work together for a better community. At this time, I would like to thank you for listening. And also, I would like to ask uh, uh, to thank the young reporter from the Toronto Star that posed this qu important question to me. And I urge you all to ask that same question of all candidates that come to your door. Thank you very much. I'd like to start by saying hello to all the people in Ward 5 and welcome all of our new residents that just moved here since the last election. For those of you who do not know me, my name is Greg Walsh. This is my second time running for the Office of Councillor. I'm 40 years old and I'm a family man. I'm the owner and president of a local transport company which is located in Ward 5. This year, different from the last election, I've tried to decided I'm going to do something different. When you see my flyer this time, instead of seeing a pretty face on the front, you're going to see a picture of an issue. You're going to see a dump site. And you're going to ask yourself, well, what has that got to do with me? Well, it has a lot to do with you, and if you bear with me, I'll explain. This is roughly a picture of what you're going to see. It is tires strewn all over our industrial area. This is just one site of many which I've discovered in the past few years. I have been actively fighting this problem and I've been searching for solutions. I have developed a viable plan for the control and monitoring of the disposal of random tires in on for that would be set an example for all of Ontario. Random dumping creates a visual eyesore and costs landlords a lot of money to have the debris removed and affects property values. It also poses potential health problems. Scores of tires left on an industrial site collect rainwater. That rainwater turns stagnant. It becomes a breeding ground 
for mosquitoes, black flies, and nits. So when you're sitting in your backyard next time next summer having a barbecue and a family over and you see these cloud of bugs swarming around, you know exactly where they're coming from. I've told you. Curbing this problem would open our industrial areas to prospective investors and much needed jobs. Okay, jobs. By cleaning up our industrial areas, we can work towards enticing more and new business and create much needed jobs and tax dollars. It is equally important that Scarborough encourage the hiring of city residents for municipal jobs. The number of city employees that are not Scarborough residents are far too high. The main reason we continue to lose industry and jobs to other cities is our high industrial tax. For example, Scarborough industrial taxes are double that of Markham. As a result, we not only lose jobs, but much needed tax dollars putting the burden on our residential community. Job loss since the last election in 91 has gone 6%, 6% of our population, and it is still falling. Taxes. By moving towards a fair industrial tax, existing businesses will be encouraged to stay New firms will be enticed to set up shop in Scarborough. Industry is the crucial link in Scarborough's economic chain. The chain must be repaired if we are to continue with a 0% increase in your property taxes. Because equalized assessment and market value assessment have been rejected by the province, we must all continue to appeal our assessments until we, we can make the province realize how deplorable their system truly is. Crime. Now, this is a big one. There's been a hiring freeze on our officers, and we've been suffering for it. Morale in our Metropolitan Toronto Police Department is at an all-time low. I have sat down with the officers in 41, in their right in their boardroom, and I've talked with them, asking them, what can I do for you to make your job better and to help stop crime in Scarborough? I went right to the core of the problem. We continue to have only half of the officers per population that Toronto has, and yet our 41 and 42 division answer more calls than any other division in Metro. 41 division answers more gun calls than any other division or department in the entire province of Ontario, and that is a fact. If you walked into a store and bought a dozen eggs and were only handed six, well, you'd be as mad as hell. Well, I am as mad as hell, and I want the rest of our officers, and I want them now. We also need to help free up officers from time-consuming duties, which tie them to the office instead of being on the street preventing crime. Therefore, I propose a volunteer assistance program called COPS, Citizens Offering Police Support. Such volunteers could assist with paperwork and answering non-emergency phone calls freeing up time for our officers to spend more time on the beat. Things are so bad in 41 Division that for a while there we had to bring in 24 officers for a period of 10 weeks for the evening shift just to assist us. And these officers came from all over other departments. We have five to six men alone called the Alternate Response Unit which are simply report takers. They just sit and take reports. If my program is put into effect, they'll all be on the street and could amount in a savings of anywhere between $1 to $1.9 million in one division alone, and that savings would be passed on to the taxpayer. Senior citizens. Our senior citizens who built this community should be respected for their contributions and sacrifices. Their experience and wisdom is far, far too valuable to be neglected or wasted. Our seniors should be able to remain in their homes as independent and productive members of our community. City Council must make the initiative to provide senior citizens with adequate funding and more access to health and social services. On the back of my flyer, when you receive it, if you haven't, you'll see a note there stating that I promise, the same as in the last election. I'm going to go over it with you. I promise to listen, consult, and advise you with newsletters, notices, public meetings on issues that affect you and our community. I promise not to use the 
office of councillor for Ward 5 as a political stepping stone. I have no aspirations for office in Queen's Park or Ottawa. I am not a member of a political party. Thank you. The only people that I represent are the people of Ward 5. I promise to fight to keep a lid on residential taxes and fight to lower our industrial taxes so that we can increase our industrial tax base and provide more employment for Scarborough. I promise to fight for the city of Scarborough to actively promote itself to prospective businesses and industrial tenants. I, propose, I promise to fight for more police to help our overworked 41 and 2 division in Scarborough. I promise not to accept any campaign donations from any developer as I believe that the only reason a developer would make a donation to my campaign would be simply to influence my decision making. I promise to fight for our homeowners against absentee landlords and for our renters to combat substandard apartment buildings where they live. I'm going to take a minute here to thank all of my supporters from the 1991 municipal election. They came out in droves and I really, really appreciate their support. It was pouring rain and the fact that as many of you came out in support of me as you did was just mind boggling to me. That is what encouraged me to run again. That and the fact that I am deeply concerned with the issues that are going on in Scarborough. I am not looking for a job because it is not a job, it is community service. I have a good job and should I become elected, my family will be taking over the full operation of my business so I can become your full-time counselor. I'm going to repeat that, full-time counselor. If elected, I will do you proud. Your vote will not be in vain. If you would like a copy of all of the literature which I have read to you here today, I will be at Election Fest put on by the Scarborough Mirror and I will have copies on hand for you. If you are not going to make Election Fest, please feel free to give me a call at 297-6676. A lot of you will have the phone number sitting on your fridge because I gave you a list of phone numbers for Scarborough offices as well as my own that you can get in touch with me at any time. And there's a home number even, so 24 hours a day I am accessible. If you do not see a lot of signs out saying, Greg Walsh, I'd like to make this point before I leave you, it is because Halloween is coming and I did not want them all over the subdivision being thrown around by the kids as a prank as during their, while well, they go trick or treating. I did not want to be responsible for any child getting poked in the eye with any sharp sticks. So any signs that will go up will be after Halloween at the request, only the request of the people involved. So keep in mind, every time you see a vacant property without a sign, that may very well be me. Thank you very much for your time, and I hope I have your support. Goodbye. Good day, everybody. I would like to introduce you to Bill Suttatree, who a lot of people think will be our next counselor in Ward 5. I'm Warren Fraser, and I live in the ward. And Bill? Uh, some of the questions I'd like to pose to you today is one of why are you running and why are you the best person for counselor in our Ward 5 of Scarborough? Thank you, Warren. Well, you know, I've been a resident of Ward 5 for 24 years, and I've been very active in the community as, a, as the founding president mm -hmm. of the Midland Park Community Association, and uh, I've worked with uh, other associations on numerous issues. You know, the uh, Glen Andrew Association where you live, the North mm -hmm. Bendale, Confederation Park, and so on. Over the years, we've been involved in a number of community activities. And uh, so I feel with my community background in itself that that's a good starting point. I live in the ward. Um, my wife uh, and I have our own home in Ward 5. Our son and uh, daughter both have homes in the ward. And we have a stake in this community. Mm -hmm. I, uh, I come from a business background, Warren. I left Ontario Hydro last year after 23 years. I have a varied background in business. Uh, I spent a number of years in the corporate affairs section of Ontario Hydro and I, I've dealt with people in all that time. Mm -hmm. uh, prior to that I was in the Chamber of Commerce business and, and as part of that business I 
operated the, the economic development activity of a board of trade. I see. So with the business background, my community interest, and my sincere desire to serve the people of Ward 5, I think that I'm the best choice for counselor. All right. Okay, Bill. Uh, I was just wondering, what do you consider the most important issues uh, facing Scarborough today? Well, there are a number of issues, and you know, mm -hmm. there's a number of motherhood statements that all the candidates are throwing out. Crime, of course, is uppermost in many people's minds. Mm -hmm. And yes. uh, we'll talk about that a little later on when we get into the questionnaire that I've been yeah. taking to the doors. But there's taxation. People are concerned about their taxes. There's development. We have to stimulate development in Scarborough to get the business sector moving again. There's too many empty warehouses here, too many empty stores, too many businesses that have left this community. So those are all areas that we have to talk about. Mm -hmm. I see that uh, you have some of your responses here to that questionnaire. Uh, what are the people saying in it? Well, you know, this is, uh, this is a very different approach, I think, mm -hmm. in the political sector. Because number one, I've been walking the streets of Ward 5 since August. I've taken this questionnaire to the doors. It requires that the people read it put some thought into it, get back to us, and they have to pay for the postage. I see. And we're getting hundreds of these things back in the mail. Great. And I'm really gratified with the response and the fact that this questionnaire maybe in itself is stimulating interest in the election process. Some of the comments, and again, as I said, crime seems to be the number one issue. Mm -hmm. In fact, I've got one questionnaire here where, you know, when you go to the door and the person isn't home, you usually leave a little note that says, sorry, I missed you. And this person has written on it, you didn't miss me. I just don't open my doors to strangers. And this was dropped at that person's house at 4 o'clock in the afternoon. Yes. And they go on to talk about their concern about crime. There's other people that are concerned about uh, economic development, which uh, again is, is uh, a major issue. There's someone else here who, uh, who said, you know, we've got to bring the tax base in line with, uh, with the municipalities surrounding Scarborough so that we don't keep losing business here. And uh, there are a number of people who are concerned about basement apartments and the fact that, uh, that these are, are coming into Scarborough into what were normally single family dwelling areas, yes. that they're having an impact on the residential area and the, the beauty of it, and that uh, they are not par paying a share of the tax. So these are all areas that people are expressing concern in. Very well. I also noticed there that you uh, indicated something about the cultural and uh, theater center in, the, in, the, in our ward, possibly. Uh, why did you ask that? Well, you know, this is, this is something that, uh, how long have you lived in Ward 5? Uh, 30 years. Okay, I've lived here 24, and as long as I've lived in Scarborough, our council has talked about a theater center, a center for the arts. Nothing has been done about it. You know, North York got one, and they didn't pay for that out of tax dollars. That was paid for by development money. And there's no reason why Scarborough can't get something for the, so for the enjoyment of the arts so that people can take pride in our community again. We have got to shed this negative image that has been given to Scarborough that the press keeps playing up. Mm -hmm. I'm on the city's image committee, and I'm very concerned about what's happening here, and mm -hmm. very concerned that people are afraid to go out in the streets. I'm very concerned that, that people are not taking pride in our community. And we have got, to, I think, the theater center, if it can be done, and uh, don't get me wrong, I'm not suggesting for one minute that tax dollars are need, or should be put to that use right now because yes. we have more important uses for tax dollars. But our bicentennial is two years away and it would be nice to have a start on this uh, with development, people making some commitments with some sort of program started to, to raise public funding towards that, public donations. Not taxes though. Not taxes. And then we could get started on it. At least people will have something to look forward to and our cultural and arts community, which is very vibrant, with uh, a number of theater groups in Scarborough, would have a place that they could call their home. I see. Is there uh, anything else you'd like to say in 
Well, as we're wrapping down uh, on this. Well, conclusion. how much time have we got? Well, we got about two or three minutes. Okay, well, you know, uh, I ran for this seat 12 years ago. I didn't make it. I've always had an interest in Scarborough. Uh, the seat now is wide open. So there are six people running for it. And you know, it becomes a real puzzle mm -hmm. because the voters haven't, haven't really got a focus on what the situation is. We have this literature going to the doors and it, it, it tells you that there is a puzzle out there. People are concerned. Mm -hmm. But when you read the background of, of, of my information, yes. my personal resume as I call it, because let's face it, the voters are my employers and I'm applying for a job. And I think my resume speaks for itself. I've got the qualifications, and I, I can do a job for the people of Scarborough that I really want to do. I like people. I want to work for people. Bear in mind, though, Warren, mm -hmm. that not all the candidates running in this election in Ward 5 live in Ward 5. There are at least two that don't live here. And I the see. people, before they make that choice, should find out from the candidates where they reside. Because if you have a stake in the ward, you're going to work harder for the people. I agree. I think where times are coming to a close here, Bill, I'd like to say thanks for sharing your point of view. And for those of you out there, uh, don't forget Bill Suttatree on Ward 5 for Councillor. Thank you. Hi. I'm Brad Duguid, and I'm running for Scarborough Council in Ward 5. I grew up in Ward 5. In fact, I've lived most of my life there. My wife Jacinda and I reside there now, and, and we plan to raise our own family in the ward over the course of the next 2, 5, 10, 20 years. So we have a lot at stake at what goes on at Scarborough Council over the next three years. I, uh, I know the ward is facing a lot of difficult problems. Some of those pro problems go right to the very fabric of our community. But I still maintain that our ward is an excellent place to bring up a family, and I look forward to doing that myself. I will not allow, and I give you this commitment, that I will not allow crime, I will not allow absentee landlords, or high taxes to destroy our community without a fight. That is why I've put forward a, a 10-point plan for crime prevention that uh, I believe will make Scarborough a leader in the area of crime prevention throughout Metro and perhaps throughout the country. And I think that's important for two major reasons. Number one, our basic safety and security in our community for ourselves and our families. Number two, because we, we have some problems here in terms of uh, our property values being affected by, uh, by uh, the, uh, the problems that we're having uh, with our reputation and our image, as well, businesses are going to hesitate to locate in an area that has got a bad reputation for crime. And so I want to put forward this 10-point plan for crime prevention. I want to make Scarborough a leader in the area of crime prevention to deal with these problems. And I'm not saying it'll be the be-all and end-all to end crime in Scarborough. There's no magic wand solutions in, in an issue like this. But what I am saying is that for our basic safety and security, it's time for us to take action. I'd also like to give you my commitment that I will, will not vote in favor of any budget that raises taxes. It's not because I'm philosophically opposed to taxes. I'm not. I understand the need for taxes. It's because I recognize that our residents are already overtaxed and we simply cannot afford another tax increase. And in addition, our businesses are already going in droves to Markham, Pickering, and, uh, and other places in the perimeter of Metro Toronto that have lower tax rates. So if we do not increase taxes, we may be able to save some of those jobs. And that's got to be a, a very important goal for our city. We've got crime on our perimeter, threatening our communities from the outside. And in, in our interior, in, in our communities, we have absentee landlords who are letting their houses deteriorate and threatening our property values and threatening the fabric of our community. I think it's time to start using our bylaws and upstepping our enforcement 
to make these absentee landlords who refuse to clean up their properties come into line. And that's something that I, I think council will have to address over the next three years. I've worked at all three levels of government. I've worked up on Parliament Hill for three and a half years. I worked with Derek Lee, the MP for Scarborough Rouge River there. I work with Catherine Colbeck as her executive assistant in Ottawa as well. She's got on to become Premier of Prince Edward Island. I've worked at Queen's Park. I worked there with, uh, as, as executive assistant to Frank Faubert while he was the MPP for Scarborough, Scarborough Ellesmere. And I've worked at Metro Council as well as executive assistant to Scott Cavalier. And I look forward to putting my experience at all three levels of government to work for you in Ward 5. I, uh, I think the next three years are going to be very challenging years for our city. I think they're going to be pivotal to the future of our city. And with your support on November 14th, I look forward to engaging my experience at all three levels of government, my abundant energy, and my lifetime commitment to our ward in a battle to make sure that we keep our, our neighborhood safe and that we keep our neighborhood a good place to raise our families. Thank you very, very much. I'm Chris Buhager, and I'm, your, and I'm your candidate in Ward 6 for City Councilor, and I'm here today to respond to a message. A message the residents of Scarborough have been sending for some time. The message is that government isn't working anymore. The system is broken. Residents of Scarborough believe that no one is listening to them. They are frustrated, and they are angry. The residents of Scarborough are demanding to know why things never seem to change in government. They want government to make the same types of decisions that all of us have had to make in our families, in our businesses, and in our communities. I hear this message every day, and I'm ready to do something about it. It is time for a new generation of Scarborough residents to stand up as leaders, and I am sure that my experience and dedication to our community will be an asset to Scarborough. It has become apparent in the last few years that the city of Scarborough is in need of hardworking, community-oriented leaders who will champion the development of our city into the 21st century. Without a strong vision for Scarborough's future, we will be left with a city stagnant and unable to compete. Decisive leadership has been lacking in Scarborough for a number of years, and today we must return it. In a way of an introduction, let me tell you that I am born and raised in Ward 6, and I'm a graduate of David and Mary Thompson. I hold a Bachelor of Arts degree in Political Science and International Relations, and currently I'm a law student at Osgoode Hall Law School. I've been active in the community for a number of years, and currently I'm helping to design the future of public education in Scarborough through the Scarborough Board of Education's action planning teams. Let's face it, Scarborough residents are ready for a change in the way we do government, and I'm here to tell you how I plan to do that. I'd like to introduce you to my vision for Scarborough. Scarborough residents want a responsible and accountable city council, and so do I. I support a 100% freeze on municipal taxes for three years while maintaining priority services. I am committed to rooting out waste, but I am also committed to preserving the priority services that the, city, that the residents of Scarborough find essential. Too many essential services are now being cut 
or squeeze so hard that the quality of service is in danger. There is plenty of fat to be cut from government without touching the services which are priorities for the residents of Scarborough. It is time for a re-examination of the size and the role of government here in Scarborough. I support a 100% freeze on councillor salaries for three years and an end to the tax-free benefits that they receive on one-third of their salaries. It is time for government and politicians to make the same choices that we have to make in our daily lives, in our families, and in our businesses. I support active communication between council and the residents. Municipal politicians must be the most accessible level of politician in our communities, and I am a firm believer that they must be active within and supportive of community organizations. Election time should not be the only time that residents see their councillors. Scarborough is tired of politicians who are afraid to talk straight and make the tough decisions. In order to bring back safe streets in Scarborough, Council must realize that they have a role to play. It is time to simply stop, it is time to stop simply shifting blame from one level of government to the other, and it's time to act here in Scarborough. I support zero tolerance of violence, and I will continue to spread this message. I will ensure city planning and zoning that makes community safety and crime prevention a priority, and that works to protect Scarborough residents. I will urge Metro Council to increase the police resources targeted at Scarborough. However, at the same time, we must be supportive of our police and their initiatives, and we must end the destructive trend of handcuffing their efforts. I plan to promote effective cooperation between police and the private sector, and to encourage further community-based anti-crime efforts. Development and investment in Scarborough is vital. Lasting job creation must come from the private sector, and anyone who has gone for a drive in Scarborough can see the number of empty stores and empty industrial sites that our city has. Businesses that create jobs, especially small businesses, have told me that they are swamped with red tape and over-regulation. Scarborough Council must create an environment that is friendly to investment and development, by cutting the red tape and lengthy decision-making periods that stifle vital private sector job creation. Council must ensure economic planning in coordination with Scarborough businesses. Development, however, can no longer be at the expense of our environment, our residents, and our community. No longer can we afford to create areas like Eglinton Avenue and Kennedy Road. I support an increase in park and green space in the city and I support development that takes into consideration the greening and beautifying of our community. Finally, it is time for Scarborough bashing to end. Born and raised in Scarborough, I am ready to stand up and speak out in support of Scarborough. My vision for Scarborough comes from your message of what you want government to be. You want a city council that represents your concerns, you want responsible and accountable councillors. You want more action and less rhetoric, and you want a new vision for Scarborough. I am committed to these issues, and I will bring them to Scarborough City Council. On November 14th, join me and bring new vision and leadership to Scarborough City Council. Thank you. Hello, my name is Ruth Jorsheff. I'm a resident of Ward 6 in Scarborough. I'm here with Brian Hughes running for City Council. Hi, Brian. How are you today, Ruth? Good. Can you let me know a little bit about yourself? Certainly. I'm a resident of Ward 6, have been for 40 years. I'm married with two children. Uh, I was raised in the ward, obviously. My wife is also from Ward 6. And uh, when we married and had a family, we bought a home in the ward and decided to raise our family there. I'm involved in the community with uh, respect to home and school, neighborhood watch, uh, kids. I've been involved for six years with baseball, hockey, minor sports. Always been a community activist, and I think uh, it's time. It's time to get more involved. What would you like, if you get elected council, what would you like to see changed hmm. in Ward 6? We have 10 minutes, Ruth. That's okay. a lengthy answer. Uh, there's a number of things, uh, first of all, that I don't think are happening, at least happening at the rate that should be. 
I think a, a prime concern with everybody within the city, and in my concern, Ward 6 in particular, is the level of crime and safety. It has to be addressed, and we can address these issues by simply, and it is simple, to amend some of the current antiquated bylaws to really reflect the changes in the community over the last 10 years and make or allow the police to do a more effective job. We, have, we all have frustrations with our local government and uh, can you imagine the frustration of the police when they try to do their job and they really are not allowed to do? They're, they're restricted. They don't have the opportunity to do what has to be done. By amending some of our current bylaws and uh, creating new where necessary, we can really address this issue. And I think, Ruth, with special emphasis on the schools and our seniors community, this is the age of information. We have to share that information so people can make an educated choice in uh, how they live their daily lives. We're all creatures of habit. We go to the same place every day. We shop the same way. We're really, if we have access to the information on how our community has changed, we could maybe change our lifestyle a bit and make it a little safer. Good. What about the senior citizens in Ward 6? Well, it's an active group. It's an active group. And I guess I'm getting older because uh, I identify more with the seniors' concerns than I do with any other level at this point. So I guess that's an indication that we're all aging rapidly. But I guess probably from the perspective, I've lived in the ward for 40 years. And as I've gone through the ward in the last uh, month, door to door, I've talked to a lot of seniors, and the seniors' concerns I share. Uh, my parents still live in the ward, 75-year-old father and mother. Uh, live, I've moved a long way from home, four blocks from where I grew up. My kids go to the same public school I went to. Uh, seniors' concerns are legitimate, and they really reflect uh, the concerns of everyone. I was talking to a gentleman the other day, and this talk about the height of frustration, uh, and seniors, again, all, all across the board. You work your whole life to make a situation comfortable in your retirement. They've worked uh, making their home a comfortable place. They've set up everything that they might or should be able to enjoy their retirement. What happens now is terribly frustrating. This one gentleman was in tears when he was explaining his situation to me. He's all set financially. His home is ready. And uh, on either side of him now, absent landlords have rented out the upper and lower levels. Parties go on all hours of the day and night. These people who assumed that 65 years old, they just retired, were looking forward to uh, a comfortable retirement are going to sell their home and move. And this is becoming more and more of a problem within the city. And in reference to what we talked about earlier with the amending of bylaws, even with the amendment of a couple of local bylaws such as noise uh, would allow the police to really address this situation. They go into a situation like this now with their hands tied and they can't do anything. Exactly. Uh, how do you stand on taxes, property taxes, which is a great you would That's a great issue. issue. You know, there's all kinds of issues, and taxes are always at the forefront because money, money talks. Mm -hmm. On top, above and beyond the market value assessment portion or the concern of taxes, I think we have to get a little more aggressive in the collection of unpaid taxes, especially business tax. Now, I'm going to offend the business community here, so be it. Um, I was sat at one session of council in the spring, and uh, correct me if the numbers are off, but they won't be off by far. In one swoop, without any hesitation at all, the city voted to write off $600,000 in uncollected business tax that they were not able to collect. I think we have to get a little more ambitious in this program. I don't, my understanding was this wasn't a one-shot deal. It happens on a regular basis. Let's apply some of our city employees that are currently probably overstaffed and underworked. I'm going to offend somebody else here, too. But reallocate these people to perform functions that are in more need. The Works Planning Building Department, oh, five minutes already. The Planning and Building Department uh, currently has the same baseload other than those that have retired and reduced through attrition. Can we not take some of these people to get it more aggressively involved in tax collection or other areas of the city where deemed necessary? OK, now let's speak a little bit about our councillor that is already in office, Paul Muskinski, what do you feel you could do differently in and, and working with the community? Myself, I am totally involved with the community of Ward 6. Um, what could I expect from you? Well, hopefully, I guess the way you worded it first was differently. Hopefully, I could do everything differently than our incumbent. Uh, we keep hearing from uh, the incumbent that he's one of the more accessible candidates. We hear that uh, he works at this full time. Everybody's interpretation of full-time is different. Now, full-time, does that mean we don't have other employment? Or that uh, I'm talking about a full-time commitment here. I'm offering myself to the candidates of Ward 6 to 
represent them on a full-time basis and be accessible. Accountability is the big thing here. Now, Ruth, you're available or aware of. The groundwork is currently being laid to create a Ward 6 constituency association, which will meet regularly with the elected representatives within the ward for almost uh, to ensure accountability of our elected candidates. Uh, to expand on that, they will meet on a regular basis for an information exchange and monitoring of each other's progress. I'm involved with creating this, and uh, if elected, I would certainly uh, value this association and use it as a means uh, to really be more effective and represent the constituents more effectively. So if a telephone call came into your office, the person living in Ward 6 would get a return call? My intention is to represent the constituents of Ward 6. I'm frustrated uh, with the current goings-on of Council, Ward 6 in particular, that's where I live. I honestly believe that I can represent the constituents more industriously than is currently being done. Good. Um, any other questions? Anything else you'd like to see, say, or see done in Scarborough? Well, I think we have to get proactive here on a lot of fronts. Uh, council, it's frustrating to watch. I've attended council for the last uh, year and a half, and when I haven't been there, I've certainly monitored on Cable 10. Um, there's so many things we have to get involved in. We talked uh, tax reform, and not only, again, market value assessment, how about pension reform? This is a, a stickler with me, and maybe I can again use my example. I worked for a large manufacturing firm in the private sector for 16 years. I contributed to that pension plan, and when a negotiated agreement, a trade agreement, would, came in, implemented three or four years ago, and it really kicked in, it affected the manufacturing sector in uh, Ontario in particular. It was the most devastated. The company I worked for lost uh, 600 people, one, one swoop. Now, my vested interest in that pension stays at the contribution level it did three years ago. I'm not entitled to that money. Being 41 years old, I'm not entitled to a dime of that money for 24 years. Conversely, elected officials pension in their arrogance. Now again, my understanding of this, I'll probably be corrected, and if you think I'll make any friends on council with this, you're dreaming. After three terms, and again, we'll use me as an example, at 41 years old, if elected for three terms, I can retire at 50 with a pension payable upon date of retirement. So I could theoretically collect that pension for 15 years before I'm entitled to a pension that I contributed to for 16 years, 25 years after the fact. It's a two-tiered system here. We have to lose this uh, identity that it's us and them. I would like to represent the constituents of Ward 6 in an effective fashion without the arrogance. One minute. Okay, Mr. Hughes, I, I'm Brimley and Eglinton area, and I'm not impressed by all the buildings going on, um, all the restaurants that Eglinton Avenue is starting, um, and that's obviously been uh, voted on at City Council. Um, I, what I would like to see, and a lot of people in Ward 6, we would like to get, if something happens or is being built at Midland and Lawrence, because I'm at Brimley and Eglinton, there's no reason Definitely that affects. I don't get notified. We're cutting on time here, Ruth. Yep. I'm going to jump. Mm -hmm. The proposed change is 30 seconds. Uh, I could go on forever. Please call me and we'll discuss all your concerns. I would like to close here, Ruth. Sorry, oh. I can't address that. I would like to appeal to the electorate of Ward 6, all the constituents of Ward 6. Exercise your democratic right to vote, but make an educated choice. The choice you make in the upcoming election affects you for the next three years. Study your candidates, get into their platforms, Make an educated choice. I got to wind up here. Choose wisely. Elect Brian Hughes, Ward 6. Thank November you very much 14th. for your time. Good day, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Paul Mashinsky, and I'm the city councillor for Ward 6. What I have continued to do during these past three years has been to bring City Hall into your homes. I've done this in several ways, visiting many of you in your homes, your kitchens, your yards, your front yards, your backyards. When I've called, I've been there. In addition, I've initiated a newsletter which continues to bring you up to date with respect to what's happening at City Hall in Ward 6, as well as the city as a whole. This newsletter encourages feedback and opinions 
which are indeed welcomed and valued. Ladies and gentlemen, this has been a period of tough times. Quite frankly, there are many projects in the city which are vying for your tax dollar, and in fact, would raise your taxes. What you do know is that since 1990, when I was a leader on Team Zero, when we accomplished a zero tax increase in your property taxes and your business taxes for 1991, we have been able to continue a no tax policy during the years 1993 and 1994. In 1992, we were able to keep the tax increase to 2.4%, which was below inflation. I am particularly proud of these results. And it goes to show you what can be done with prudent management of your financial resources. Many of you were encouraged to appeal your property taxes, and you did just that. Many people received tax reductions in 1992, with refund checks being mailed for that reduction, as well as continued decreased property taxes for the future. This was a result of my involvement in fighting for a fair tax arrangement in Metro Toronto. I have been, I am proud to have been able to help so many people in Ward 6. For these reasons alone, I'm asking you to support me in the prudent management of your financial, financial dollar. There are other issues I would like to talk about. As you know, crime and property standards are of vital interest to all of us. As many of you know, I'm an avid supporter of the Neighborhood Watch program and heartily endorse this form of self-support in our community. In Ward 6, we have the benefit of the community-based police program, which brings the policeman to the community, either on foot or on bicycle. We now have a police substation at the Scarborough Town Centre, which fits right into our community activities. There is also a further police substation on Lawrence Avenue. These are steps forward in coming to grips with the negative forces impacting upon our community. Many of you also know of my involvement with the closure of the Bordeaux restaurant on Bimbrook Road, which had been a blight on our residential community for the past 16 years. Another restaurant which caused considerable grief in our ward was Hilly's at Lawrence and Brimley Road. For four years, we had been battling this negative impact, and early in 1994, we were able to get liquor convi convictions which enabled us to have the restaurant closed on a permanent basis. Finally, I was able to ward off the opening of the Club Galaxy. This was an after-hours dance hall proposed at Midland Avenue and Stansbury Crescent, right in the middle of a residential area, before it even opened its doors. Ladies and gentlemen, I am proud of that result. Many of you know that I have also taken an active role in dealing with absentee landlords whose property standards are no longer compatible uh, with the existing neighborhood. I have been successful in negotiating with these absentee landlords and many instances to bring their properties back up to standard. One of the most difficult achievements has been to get the owners and tenants along Lawrence Avenue between Barrymore and the Rockcliffe Nursing Home to understand that the garbage pickup is only once a week. There has been a significant improvement here, but admittedly, we have a long way to go. Many of you have been hurt by parking your car in what appeared to be a reasonable location, but because the property owner had entered into an agreement with a towing company, your car may have been towed when you went off the property, even for a few minutes. This was particularly prevalent in the Knob Hill Plaza along Lawrence and, and a plaza along Lawrence Avenue 
uh, across from the uh, Scarborough General Hospital. You should know that I was instrumental in curtailing this practice by removing the financial incentive or bounty to have vehicles removed. I am proud of this result, even though the tag and towing industry screams that they've been hard done by. Many of you know that the Knob Hill Plaza has improved remarkably over the past six years due to the in involvement of the tenants, Boy Scouts, and other various interested party parties who have virtually taken the bull by the horns to bring this plaza back into the mainstream of property standards. There is still a long way to go, but I'm asking for your support in this program. Now I would like to take you, ask you to take a look at the East Town Plaza at the corner of Brimley and Eglinton, which shows you firsthand how I've been able to work with a plaza owner. This is a marvelous project, and the plaza is a gem, providing unique and first-class eating facilities to the surrounding community. I am proud of these results, and I want you to know that someday perhaps the Knob Hill Plaza will be similarly upgraded. I want you to look at some of the road programs that were accomplished in Ward 6. You can observe Cedarbury Boulevard and Bimbrook Road, Chestermere Road, and Chelway Street, just to mention a few. All of these programs became part of the capital budget as a result of your and my initiatives. I believe Ward 6 has benefited immensely from the works program to maintain our roads at a high standard. I'm particularly proud of this result. In summary, I want, you, I want to give you three simple reasons why you should feel comfort, comfortable supporting Paul Mashinsky as your ward councillor once again. First of all, I live in the ward on Gaiety Drive, just off Lawrence Avenue, south of St. Rose of Lima Church. What affects you affects me, and believe me, I know Ward 6, and many of its people and the many issues impacting upon us. Secondly, I do not represent the interests of any political party. At City Hall, I represent your interest and the interest of the ward only. That's the way it is, even though some parties are running candidates against me. Thirdly, you have my assurances of a full-time, and I emphasize a full-time counselor and commitment with respect to that job, and a commitment to deal directly with you, the constituents, on the same day or no later than the next day. That's been a fact for the past six years. My track record is one of proactivity, dealing directly with the issues that arise, coming to grips with them and solving them, and impacting positively on the neighborhood. My motto is very simple. It's working with the whole community, not just special interest groups or select groups. This has never been the case and never will be the case. I would ask for your support to continue this mandate even through uh, this mandate through the next term of my office. Thank you for listening to me, ladies and gentlemen. Please do vote on November the 14th for Paul Mashinsky as your city councillor in Ward 6. Good evening, my name is Ed Green. 
I'm a resident of Scarborough for the past 20 years. I've uh, nominate, been nominated to run as uh, a candidate in the forthcoming municipal elections in the Ward 7 area. Ward 7 boundaries covers the area of Lake Ontario at the south to the CNR tracks in the north. And uh, from Brimley Road via St. Clair on the west and includes the Guildwood community south of the tracks in the east. I am currently uh, the Vice President of the Scarville Village South Community Association. Uh, I have been re-elected to, to Vice President just at the past annual general meeting and have participated in many activities, uh, concerns and uh, OMB hearings, development issues with that group. Also as part of the uh, Scarborough Village South Community Association, I attended the Alliance of Community Action Groups as part of the representation from the Scarborough Village South Community Association. And on their behalf attended many uh, communi uh, community meetings and committee meetings at the City Hall and at City Council as well. And um, I was involved in um, making representations to committees and the City Council on issues concerning housing. I was involved in the official plan housing policy decisions that the committee and council took. I made representations on the heritage resources policy. Also, the secondary plan consolidation report. Other issues that I attended and made representations included third party advertising signed bylaw. I was a major representative and concerned about the issue of the Metro East Transportation Corridor Study and made, uh, wrote several letters to representatives uh, at staff and uh, council members as well as Metro Council staff and members. I was involved in the uh, issue of the Kennedy GO station where my major concern was as access to public washrooms and I made representations in writing to the GO Transit as well as attended the uh, open house sessions on that subject. One of the main issues that I worked on in the past year and a half in uh, the area was in regards to a TTC policy uh, in regards to public access. The um, current policy that the TTC had was to build or provide washrooms only at end of line station or major transit uh, stations. But uh, I uh, worked with the uh, City Council and uh, st uh, City staff as well as uh, Metro Councillor Brian Ashton and made representations to the C TTC Commission to have that policy changed. And a result of that, the new subways that are being built, uh, the Eglinton Line and the Shepherd uh, system will have public washroom access at every station a major, major decision. And I, I thank those people that assisted me in that and I hope it will be a benefit to all citizens of Scarborough as well of Metro. I'd like to get back to again our local community and some of the concerns that uh, I was involved there, there. I was involved in the official plan and zoning application on the Garden View Co-op which was the White Swan Motel on Kingston Road and I oppose that development and currently it is not being built at this time. I was involved in negotiations with the community association in regard to the salty development at the corner of Kingston Road and Saunders Road and participated in several community uh, meetings with the uh, residents of that area to try and come up with a doable plan. I was involved in many meetings, community meetings and planning committee, city council meetings in regards to the development at 50 Markham Road, which we uh, negotiated the community association on behalf of the residents to have that development reduced from a 50 unit condominium to what was one time going to be 16 townhouse and then just re recently renegotiated to uh, have it at 18 townhouses and now the building permits have been issued for that. The Markington Square development at the corner of Eglinton 
and Markham Road is a major concern. And I have worked with the community association and with the developer in trying to reduce the height of the apartment buildings, the traffic on the, in the area, and uh, the flow of traffic in the community in general. And we have made some major advances, but still a lot of work is uh, required, including a reduction in density, and a an OMB hearing will be forthcoming shortly where that will be the major issue. Not only that, again, I have some experience in nonprofit community as, uh, community as well. I'm uh, the acting president of the Crohn's and Colitis Foundation of Canada Scarborough Chapter. <clears throat> and I work in, re in regards to, again, fundraising activities, and I've worked with the annual M&M barbecue in the area to raise funds for this foundation. As a member of the executive, again, we're concerned about providing services, educational service and public awareness to the members in the Scarborough area and to inform the general public. And we have major forthcoming plans to increase that public awareness, which I will be a part of. I know many citizens are concerned with the bluffs erosion and lakefront erosion. A study uh, by the city and other government agency called the Shoreline Management Plan Study has been requested and is now being funded. I will consult with residents through their community association once this plan or study has been issued to get their comments and to uh, go back to implement the recommendations that the community supports. Another study that uh, is being undertaken by the City of Scarborough is called the Kingston Road Study. But it has taken the incumbent six years of his term of office to have this study initiated. And it is only this year that the groundwork and background paperwork is being con conducted. Although the Scarborough Village South Community Association has supported this review of land use in the community, uh, and I am very interested in what the study uh, is going to report, I just again would like to note that it's taken a long time to get it off the ground. But once it is finalized and the study comes before council and planning committee, I would certainly like to have an input and I will request and have support from the community association and the residents that this will affect. Many citizens in the Ward 7 are concerned about the infiltration of the overflow of traffic from Kingston Road and its environmental impact. I have talked to many people that are very much concerned about this. I will work to look into this and further uh, review if some positive action can be taken to remedy this situation. As of now, the incumbent councillor, as far as I am aware of, has not done anything. As you can see, I've worked with the community association in my ward area, as well as worked in uh, regards to many issues in the citywide area, and I continue, continue to do this. And just in summary, I have the experience. I've read the council reports and understand them, and have attended many planning committee meetings and other committee meetings, works, environment, administrative meetings, and I have worked with the community association and their executive, and I'm part of one of those community association, to work to a larger and better community. I have the leadership skills on working with meetings and conducting meetings. I will represent Ward 7 residents and be involved in all city issues. I promise to attend all meetings for its duration, and I will attend to be a full-time counselor. I hope you can see that my qualifications deserve your vote. I hope that you will turn out on Monday, November 14th to vote, to vote for whatever candidate you choose. Please exercise your vote. It is a very important part of the democratic process. That is my comments. I hope that you will view them and see that uh, I am a durable candidate for this forthcoming election. I hope to have your vote. Thank you very much. Good evening. Make an informed decision this November the 14th. 
Watch Trillium Community 10's mayoralty debate, Monday, October the 31st at 9 p.m. Tuesday, November the 1st at 7 p.m. Saturday, November the 5th at 2 p.m. And on Thursday, November the 10th at 10 p.m. Trillium Community 10, your election connection. Good day, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Darcy Keene, and today I have the opportunity to be interviewing Mr. David Soknacki, who is seeking the position of counselor in Ward 8 Scarborough in this upcoming election on November the 14th. Hello, David. Hi, Darcy. David, uh, getting right to the point, uh, you're a successful businessman here in Scarborough as president of Ecom Trading, just up the street at McCowan and uh, Shepherd Avenue. Um, that combined with the fact that politicians have fallen into some disregard in recent years, what um, what led you to decide to seek a position as counselor in Ward 8? Well, Darcy, I see it very much as a commitment to community. I see it as a commitment to uh, the community I've lived at since, gee, 1963 when my folks moved in and mm -hmm. continued to uh, live in that same area since then, mm -hmm. and uh, now uh, married and uh, bringing up uh, our son Andrew in the same area. So you basically spent your whole life in the community? That's right. Yeah. And uh, I've made a commitment to that community. First, uh, I was very active in founding our uh, Densgrove Park Community Association, later became president of that association, was involved in a whole host of other activities, um, all as a volunteer, uh, everything from coaching baseball, being a host right here on Scarborough Cable for a number of years, member of the uh, Rotary Club, uh, even director of the Metropolitan Housing uh, Development Corporation. So it's been a wide range of activities, a commitment to our community, and that's why I think it's so important to run. Well, that's, uh, that's very interesting, David. Um, over the 30 years that you have been living in Ward 8, uh, you must have seen a lot of changes to Scarborough. Uh, perhaps you'd share with us some of the changes that you've seen, and perhaps more specifically, tell us what uh, some of the issues are in this election that people are telling you on the doorstep. Well, it's <clears throat> funny. Coming on the doorstep, uh, it's, it's like the old real estate joke about uh, the main thing is location, location, location. Well, the main three issues are public safety. That's what everybody's talking about. You mean uh, crime? Crime on the doorstep. And it's very much also the issue that Car Scarborough has moved from being a bedroom community to being a city. And we have to face the issues of crime. We have to do it in a practical way that uh, we as city councillors can deal with mm -hmm. because we are we have certain things that we can do certain things that are beyond our jurisdiction okay well you say uh, you say we've become a big city and it's true we're over half a million uh, over half a million people in Scarborough now um, does that mean that the issue of crime has changed and the kind of crime that we're having uh, take place in Scarborough is different than it used to be well what people are finding is that even a little bit a violent crime is too much for them. Mm -hmm. and so you'd support a zero tolerance position? Zero tolerance is very important. We also support a whole range of issues that Scarborough can work on mm -hmm. and we can get to those issues as well. But I want to go back to the issues because you said what are the issues that people are finding on the doorstep. We're also finding the issue of taxes mm -hmm. and although it's getting tougher and tougher to maintain I believe that the uh, zero tax increase is an important issue. Mm -hmm. and as well, following through from the school board issue when the trustees gave themselves that unheard of raise, we found that people on the doorstep are saying, what sort of accessibility and what sort of accountability will you be facing? And as somebody who has lived in the ward for all of my life, for somebody who has been, has a commitment to the community associations, I believe that working with the community associations and building a sense of community mm -hmm. is so important. We see it in the Curran Hall area. We see it in the Seven Oaks area. We've seen it uh, for a while in the Confederation uh, area. We've mm -hmm. seen it for a while in the Densgrove Park area. And all of these areas have a sense of community which makes the city so healthy. And it's a commitment to that and a building with that that will not only give the accessibility but the accountability as well. So you're saying the politicians should be accountable to the people that elect them and represent the views of those, uh, those people once they are elected. Absolutely. It's very much that I am their voice to the city. It's not that I am the city's voice to them. So you'll stay true to that commitment not just now but after you get oh, elected? that's the whole key. 
and that's why one of the basic reasons why I'm running. Okay, very good. Um, I'd like to change topics a little bit here, David, and getting more specifically into the solutions that you think uh, are appropriate for some of the issues that you've mentioned, not, uh, notably crime, accountability, and taxation. Uh, perhaps give us your views on the public safety issue. Sure. On public safety, there are a number of things that City Council can do. They can work, City Council can work and pass a public safety bylaw. What that involves is, on any new development, we could say, prior to a development being approved, let's talk about your lighting. Let's talk about public access. Let's talk about visibility from the street. Let's talk about whether or not the police are involved and how to get the police involved. These are all issues that can be involved inside a public safety bylaw and prior to any development going through would be passed through this bylaw. Okay. Another issue is the issue of densities. Now I think that Scarborough Council quite wrongly went through the issue of trying to define who gets to live in a building. You can't. It's a free world. However, what's very important is one should not be building these huge monstrosities, these very dense buildings that only cause problems. So you're opposed to more, any more public housing in Ward 8? I'm opposed to high density housing. Period. Period. And I okay. think that what that will do is that that will allow a better sense of community, a better sense of living. Don't get me wrong, Scarborough has become a city and it's important to realize that. Mm -hmm. However, the high densities, I think, are only a breeding ground for trouble. Okay. And how about on the issue of taxes? You, you favor the current tax freeze? I do indeed. Okay. The trouble is that's going to be a difficult one. Uh, for as you know, uh, we keep getting downloaded services. Mm -hmm. Our budget is about uh, 133.5 million. And what happens is when the city says to us, hey, you want blue boxes anymore? We're not paying for it. Or when they say, you want, you're going to have to have employment equity, but you're going to have to pay for it. 15% of our firefighters, mm -hmm. they're out either on course, on social contract, or just away. So you're saying that the problem with the city's uh, uh, budget is not necessarily the city's problem, but as a result of some of the downloading that's taken place on, by different levels of government, notably that's the provincial government. That's right. We have a responsibility, <coughs> though, to the taxpayers to, we want a zero tax increase. Uh, David, what's your position on MVA? Oh, very much in favor of market value assessment. Okay. Very much. Um, as a businessman, a business person, do you see yourself as bringing the principles that have made you a successful small business owner, manufacturer, and distributor in Scarborough uh, to your position as councillor? Very much so. The types of issues that I see that are so important are the issues of responsibility, meeting a payroll. I pay $153 a day in municipal taxes, and I'm very much aware of what it means to be a businessman in Scarborough. Now, Let's look at that in the broad brush. Let's take a look at economic development. I really think that one can do a far better job at attracting industry to Scarborough. Mm -hmm. But it's not the type of industry that you want to have one large company at which one must give all sorts of freebies and low tax and low this and all sorts of concessions that ends up costing the city afterwards. Mm -hmm. I think, for instance, we can talk about standardizing our regulations across all the cities. Okay. One of the things I've been seeing as well on knocking on doors is a surprising number of people who actually are working in their homes now. Hmm. Now, under zoning, it's questionable about whether additions to those houses are actually legal. Because, hey, after all, it's not zoned, it's zoned residential. It's not zoned industrial commercial. Mm -hmm. And the people I've spoken to have uniformly told me about the difficulties they have. They want to legally build an addition on for an office, and they're given all sorts of red tape. And I figure this sort of addition to not only our tax base, but again, their commitment to their communities, mm -hmm. I think it's important. Those sorts of things should be supported. Overall, I'm seeing a theme in what you're saying, David. And you're saying the government has got to be more responsive and ultimately more flexible to meet the needs of their, uh, of their community. And uh, so I think what you're saying is that as a business person, a person that has to be flexible to the needs of your customers, you would take that same sort of attitude towards your position as a counselor in Ward 8. Sure. Let's go back a step as well and talk about economic development for a second. One of the things that I find in speaking with people about, oh, you work, you have a business in Scarborough. I'm saying, yes, I have a business in Scarborough. I'm proud of it. I've got a business at uh, Macowan and Shepherd. It employs 15 people. We export to 20 countries. 
we, we went to Scarborough, but we have spent so long going through the zoning process, the approval process. One of the practical things that I think we could do is have one-stop shopping for people who come to the city that would make us an attractive place for business to go in. By one-stop shopping, I mean one-stop and we can go through the entire zoning issues, we can go through the entire issues that are appropriate, the regulatory things for the city. Well, that's an excellent suggestion, Mr. Soknacki, and uh, I think a lot of the ideas you've mentioned here today are, are things that will be well received by the, uh, the people of Ward 8. Uh, I'd like to thank you for sharing your time with us today, and I would like to uh, ask you that before you leave, if you have any few words you'd like to say to the people of Ward 8 in Scarborough. Sure. Well, ladies and gentlemen, uh, my name, as you know, is David Soknacki, running for councillor in Ward 8. The types of things that I stand for are essentially commitment to community. You can call them anything you like. They're a concern on public safety and what the city can do. They're a concern on accessibility and accountability. Again, the things that are absolutely important to our city. And finally, I think the, the absolute critical thing for you to consider is to go out and vote on the 14th of November. Go out and vote, and please vote David Soknacki for Councillor Ward 8.